Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been a while. Definitely been a little bit busy in real life, uh, working on some things, and also hadn't really had an idea strike me that I thought, oh, this would be cool to test out. I want to play this on the channel. Uh, that's changed today. Been kicking this around for a little bit, um, talking with some friends, and wanted to try it out. So, Alluren has definitely been a prominent feature on my channel over the years, and Food Chain is a very similar green you know, creature-based combo deck that I've always liked but not really played um, ever. So I wanted to remedy that today. So for those who don't know, Food Chain is a 3-mana enchantment that lets you exile a creature and add mana of any color where X is 1 plus that creature's CMC. You can use that mana only for creature spells. So the trick is to uh, combine this with cards like Miss Hollow Griffin, which you can cast from exile, and same with Eternal Scourge, you can uh, cast from exile. So you keep looping these with food chain, make infinite mana for creatures, and then previous versions of the deck would have to play something like Walking Ballista to kill the opponent. Um, and they play like some recruiters, um, the red recruiter, to go find that. And recruiter is not a super powerful card in my opinion. Uh, three mana, one one in red. Same with uh, Walking Ballista. I think that if you're not making big mana with Ancient Tomb and you know Grim Model and stuff like that, also kind of weak. Modern Horizons 3 gave us an interesting alternate win con in the form of Unstable Amulet, which says that whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, Amulet deals 1 damage to each opponent. So as long as we're looping the Miss Hollow Griffins, Amulet is triggering. This is very interesting, very promising, because your win con can also be your card advantage engine, where if you have other ways to generate energy in your deck, Amulet can be flipping multiple cards off your deck to help find the combo. So to help support this, I've included the you know blue-red energy package that is seeing a lot of play in modern. So we have some tune the narratives as additional cantrip, discharge as a you know some removal, and then Amps Raptor. This one is very interesting because I think sometimes it'll be great and sometimes it'll be bad where when you only have two energy, you know you have some hits, but then you also have a lot of misses. Um, there's a few things at play here. The first is that if you Amp Raptor into a Miss Hollow Griffin, even if you don't have the four energy, it just stays in exile and you can cast it, which is kind of cool. Um, and again, if you miss, like say you hit a Force of Will, it is still giving you two energy, which you can turn into a card with Unstable Amulet still. And you do just need like a starting creature for your food chain combo. So it's like, you know, if I have Amp Raptor, um, in play and then I play food chain, the Anthraptor can make three mana. Uh, this can be enough to play an Eternal Scourge or if I had one mana left over, just you know, for my lands, I can start playing the uh, Miss Hollow Griffin. So this is something I wanted to try today. We have a couple copies of Manipulate Fate to round up our things and exile them. We have a couple, I'm gonna say classically good blue green creatures and Arrow and Ice Fang, but if I'm being quite honest, I think that these cards have definitely fallen off a tiny bit over the years. Um, the format is just a little bit faster than it used to be back in like 2020, 2021 when Uro was, you know, king, we'll say. Um, but still, uh, this is something I'm interested in trying out. Very clean mana base, some basics, some fetches. Only 19 lands just because I have a lot of these like cantrips that don't select for anything, so I didn't want to flood too hard. Um, yeah, we'll see if we can uh, update a classic combo deck with some new cards, and let's jump in. All right, here for round one on the play. We've got a one lander, but we have Ponder. We have Toon and Amps Raptor. I'm going to keep this. One that seems to be on Eldrazi. So we have two lines. We could either Ponder to guarantee that we quote unquote guarantee that we hit the land, or we could go for the high roll and try to tune and to turn to the Amp Raptor uh, with some energy floating. I think I'm just going to ponder. Um, this is our second land. Unfortunately, it does not cast Amp Raptor. I think that's good enough. I'm going to draw the Miss Hollow so that I can pitch that to Force of Will. Um, and then next turn I will draw the Trop. I will cast the Ponder, probably Shuffle. What was exiled here? Three lands, one of them being Ayabugan. So 
kind of feels like, well, obviously a second Aya Bugen, that's fine. It seems to me like they had enough mana and were looking for threats, which makes sense. All right, so I will ponder here. Um, these are not red mana, so I will shuffle. There's food chain, okay. We maybe get something going. We have this tune plus our draw step to potentially hit a third land. Cavern comes down. Um, any of their four drops are annoying. <laughs> Interesting, if this is just a chalice. They, they did make this counterable, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Ah, jeez, that's rough. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll let them choose the land they want to get, and then I'll decide if I want to force the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, all right. Well, I will force the 3-3, three, three, but I'm in really bad shape this game. Unless I find a red source. Really rough. Really rough stuff. Two ponders plus a moon and a not hitting a land there is going to be really tough for us to come back from. All right. I promise most of my lands can get red mana. I promise. <laughs> Don't hate me. Yeah, it sucks that they play like eight copies of Wasteland too. Like, what a deck. And maybe I shouldn't have forced. Maybe I should have said, hey, it's just a 3 3. But my thought was I probably can't force anything else. Of course, Kills Us Command is the big thing that I could have forced. Uh, given the opportunity, we'll see. I'm still not out of it, you know. I hope my opponent doesn't find another sewing, but, um, you know, we'll see, of course. If my opponent finds another sewing, I am, in fact, out of it. Hmm. <laughs> they learned how to tap their cavern this time around. And I'm out of it. Dumb card. All right. <laughs> we'll go to game two. Uh, yeah, I was not getting there. No time close. All right, um, well, we want the Blood Moon and the Consigns. This member is certainly an option um, for hitting like Thought Not Seer. Certainly the main one we would want to hit with that. Not sure what to cut here. I feel like maybe a Tune and a Ponder just to make Chalice the Void a little bit worse. Um, definitely like all this stuff. Do one more ponder. Um, gotta make two more cuts. I like the manipulate fate. It does kind of get us going pretty easily, and it plays around chalice a bit. Um, I kind of feel like I'm trying to combo quickly, so like all the food chains, all the amulets, is something I want. Um. How good is Discharge? Discharge is like medium when you don't have other energy. I'm gonna trim one Discharge. Most of their stuff gets value on cast anyway, so it's like, okay, I could hit the 3-3 three, three off the Myco, uh, you know, sewing card, but other than that, it's not very good. Um, yeah. You trim one Amulet because it's also kind of bad against Chalice the Void, because like if you hit any of the ones, it's not bad, and, and because since I'm trimming some energy cards, it's not as good. All right, we'll run it like this. Uh, this is a no lander, uh, despite the cards being good, but that's going to happen a lot when you uh, <laughs> have no lands. Um, I think this is a keep. I'm probably gonna put back the discharge. As we mentioned, it's not the greatest card. And I could potentially, I could potentially, um, Fetch and use the brainstorm because uh, then I would like know what I'm cascading into with the raptor. I don't hate that actually. We're gonna try that. And they have two devours. It's okay. Let's say we brainstorm into ponder or tune the narrative. Then those are definitely things we would want to hit. Whereas if we just cast it normally, we're potentially missing. So they did like one of the cards it was better than any of these three which means to me is probably just likely a soul land hmm still could be a soul land <laughs> okay cool your draws decks get selection now All right and it was i'm going to brainstorm here i don't 
there's almost no shot that I would counter this, but you know. Um, so these aren't good hits. I don't have anything good to hit off Raptor, just because the only thing I would hit is another Raptor. I'm just going to shuffle away the food second food chain and hope Raptor uh, finds me something good. Uh, and I'm just going to get another Volk because my opponent is basically showing me that they have access to a Wasteland. Boom. What did we hit? Blood Moon. <laughs> no, I don't want to cast that. I mean, I do want to cast it, but I can't. <laughs> so yeah. Like I said, definitely some fail rate with this card, um, especially when you're trimming on energy. I did the best I could to set it up with the Brainstorm. I just didn't happen to find any of my ones or twos that were good hits. Uh, and that's going to happen sometimes. So here I could play the arrow. I could also just play another raptor and see what I get. I kind of like playing the raptor because now I have a lot more of my hits turned on. Ice Fang, okay. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Uh, a little far from Death Touch, but you know, that's okay. Uh, if I don't draw a land here, I am actually, okay. I was going to say, if I don't draw land here, I was actually going to not play out that land and um, protect my green source. So we know the opponent has um, two of the seven drop and the sewing. I guess also a K command. Uh, so they just make a 1-1 one, one and scry two, or scry one. I mean, that's fine. I could dismember this potentially, but I don't think I'm going to. Now I'm punished. <laughs> yep. This turn three, double stone rain, uncounterable. A very well designed magic card. I am going to dismember this so that I can start pushing damage. And it also, also cuts the creative mana off a little bit. Okay, um, well. They have another um, soul land. They do get to still cast the six drop. Interesting. Somehow they must have had all spells. Um, I still think they had a turn, so like I'm a little surprised by that. But obviously, um, my opponent knows their full hand, and not. I did not expect to win that at all. So this game's on the house. We get to see. I don't think this deck is a good Eldrazi matchup. Let me be clear. However, I do think that it's fun to test it a little. That's what we're going to do here. And I'm just going to run it back. Okay. This is not bad. We have some early interaction. Um, they're not doing anything turn one. So now it becomes a question of do I want to leave up consign or do I want to leave up discharge because I would prefer my thought process is if I'm going to consign something this turn I really would prefer not to fetch this and get the island I would prefer this to be a mountain or whatever I think I'm going to leave up the consign slash tune depending on what my opponent does and if I get a turn off I'm not likely to get a turn off but if I do it would be nice <laughs> to um yeah, oh, so they can't make this uncounterable because of how I have Ugin works, so I'm going to consign that. I think I'm going to uh, get a basic mountain here and play out the amulet. Get me some energy. I'm not going to use the energy yet in case I need to dump more of it into the discharge. Um, and there's something I could play this turn anyway. Although, let's think. Yeah, that's not surprising. Um... Okay, so I could, if I hit a Force of Will here, I can use it, but obviously, 4 and 50 shot there. And uh, <laughs> Force of Will here doesn't even matter, so. I will just do this now, though, because I don't need, I know I don't need the energy for anything. We hit a Forest. That's not terrible. Ooh, and they're playing around Blood Moon. The basics have spooked them. Alright. So... I'm going to start with this. Okay, okay. I guess I just do this now. No, actually, because if my opponent has a Thought Not Seer, 
I would want to kill it with four energy. So I'm going to wait until the end of turn before I decide what I'm doing with this. And hey, tune the narrative. Potentially a draw two, potentially a little buff here. Let's see what's happening. And it does appear to be Thought on Seer. So uh, this is definitely a card I would like to kill. I'm going to do that now. And unfortunately, my opponent gets to see my hand um, before deciding what to take. My guess is they're going to take the food chain here. And now I might just use the discharge as a way to get extra energy. Um, although now I can just play a second amulet first before deciding what I want to do. Okay, that's not bad. Um, hmm. Now it's like I could kill this 3-3 or I could do the thing I mentioned. I think what I'm going to do for now, I'm going to wait on that decision for now. And if they play something like a Flesh Raker, I kind of get the best of both worlds, right? Where I can kill the Flesh Raker while still getting um, some energy. And I don't think my life total is super under threat just yet, just because I have the Uro here. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to hold off. Ooh, and there is the Blood Moon. Actually... No, okay. Unfortunately, what I was going to say was if I just play out if I just play out the Blood Moon, I can't also play the Uro. So, I need to do this first, but it does mean that my opponent will get to um a command. That being said, I'm still probably going to cast the Blood Moon here. Because now I can't, I can't escape the Uro um, if I put the Blood Moon in play. I only have one for it, but do I have to do it? Yeah, obviously they get a big K command here, but they were going to be able to do that anyway. So it's just like, there's not much I could do about that. Yep. This still does kind of slow them down a bit, I think, a lot of times, where they have to start using the spawns to cast their spells, potentially. Uh, let's see what they did with the scry. Let's see. Zero top, four bottom. I, as far as scry foros go, that's uh, pretty good for me. <laughs> um, mm, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> so I can... So now I kind of get the best of both worlds, right? Where I can, um, I can ponder, I can discharge this, and then I have two energy left over for an amulet. Uh, well, that's not good. Um, hmm. Wonder what they take here. Probably the discharge, but you never know. Yeah, unsurprising. Well, I will ponder. I don't really know what I can hit. Um, hmm. The one discharge is gone to... Only one discharge left in the deck. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to come up a little bit short here. Um, actually, wait a minute. Okay. I'm going to do this. Uh, and then I'm going to ponder and hope that I find a food chain. Yeah, all right. Dang it. If I found a food chain there, I actually think I do win. I would have won there because I could have cast the Miss Hollow Griffin. So, oh well. Good games. Fortunately, I'm exactly dead, even with the first strike damage. Um, yeah. What can you do? On to the next. All right, here for round two, we are on the play. Let's see what this hand brings us. Uh, this seems pretty solid. Uh, turn two Ice Fang, we'll have our basics set up pretty nicely. Um, just one quick note about the last match. Uh, it's tough. You could argue that maybe I'm supposed to escape the Uro first before playing on a Blood Moon. Um, the problem with that is 
they just K-Command and exile the Uro from the graveyard anyway, so, like, it really wouldn't matter there. Like, if they say, oh, I can cast Uro next turn, I'm just going to exile Uro from the graveyard and scry for a draw card. Like, the game ends up playing out almost the same way, where they make the Scions and they still have um, the 2-2 two -two and the 4-4. Four -four. So, I don't think I had any lines there. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think this deck has a good Eldrazi matchup. It's one of the best decks in the format for a reason. Uh, it got a lot of cards from Modern Horizon 3. That's the reason. All right, opponent's on five, uh, and they have a Ponder. So usually mulliganing aggressively means something unfair. However, um, you know sometimes you just <laughs> don't draw lands in your opening too. So I'm not going to read too far into the mulligans with this hand. I am going to fetch for the forest here because I don't want to draw it. I need to play Ice Fang next turn. You could make a choice. Do I want to play into days or around days? I am going to wait a turn because um, basically the worst thing that can happen to me here is that my opponent goes in Tomb plus Reanimate, and uh, I would probably forcible that and would not want to be exposed to days in that case. The power of Entomb here, rearing its ugly head, if this was just, you know, the mere tempo, we knew that for a fact, there's nothing we would be scared of. Um, we'll see how the games play out. Obviously, opponent does not have that here. Um, I think I'm still likely to run out the Ice Fang at a turn. I just have another one and an amulet, all these things that I'd like to get going. Oh, okay, so my opponent is definitely of the combo persuasion here. And they are going for something, which makes me feel happy that I have a force of will effect in my hand. Ah, relay, okay, so they're just refilling, um, which is fine. Yeah, I guess I'll let the first ones solve. I don't think I'm going to force a particular relay card. Uh, good. Um, Echo, certainly much better for me that it's an exile and not in hand. Uh, I'm going to do this now. So it looks like... Oh. All right, well, I'm happy that I have a forceful here. Um, it looks like my opponent is going to need to find something big with Ponder next turn. But I have two lines. I could play the Amulet. I could play the Arrow. I think I'm going to play... Hmm. Uro, I think. I think I'm gonna get the arrow going. I like to get some ramp in. This lets me put my surveillance into play. Um, I can escape Uro next turn if that's what I want to do, assuming that I just surveil something into the graveyard. But we'll see what the opponent can come up with. They have a good chunk of mana. They have some selection with Ponder. Uh, this Echo is probably. Well, I say it's probably not getting cast, but that's not necessarily even true. They can just play the LED, the Dark Ritual, and then that's actually six mana to cast this uh, Echo. So they are going to get a full seven. They might even ponder first to find a uh, way to get Metalcraft for the Opal. I think that's the calculation they're making is like, is it worth it to ponder for something first? Um, and they decide yes. Which I mean makes sense to me. Like, even if they find a green mana, like a Lotus Petal or a, a Tropical Island, they can cast the Veil first and then their Under Veil protection on their turn. See what they do off their ponder. Keeper shuffle almost doesn't matter. Uh, they did not shuffle. Oh, they're beseeching. Okay. I guess it mattered. Because <laughs> now we're just dead. They get the. Uh... Yeah, pretty good hand. Uh, turn three win on a multi five through a force of will. Uh, no slouch there. They get to replay the lot. Yeah, all right. I will concede. 
Yeah, they got it. They can even veil now too. All right, do sideboarding. Uh, obviously, bring in the consigns. Bell Pierce is decent. Veil is great. Surgical is actually not bad. I like one pyroblast, one meltdown, and one hydroblast. Um, basically, we're gonna cut all the discharges. I guess we can trim like some combo elements. Because, uh, you know, obviously they're going to just be going faster than us. In a general sense. Um, could trim, are you trimming Amp Raptor too? Because we have so many bad hits now, like so many interactive cards. So, yeah. I'm going to trim out some Raptors as well. And yeah, just interaction. Hope to stumble into the combo at some point. The name of the game for us right now. All right, let's run it. Play first. Um, not the greatest, but we do have our combo, and Brainstorm can help us find interaction. We have a lot of interaction at this point, so I think this is a fine keep. Run it. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lotus Petal. Chrome Mox. We'll see if they're imprinting it or just getting a storm with it. Imprint Abrupt Decay. They don't need that where they're going. <laughs> Is my sense of things. Um, I mean, yeah, okay. They might just be echoing here. Yeah. And I definitely don't want to brainstorm here because I could draw into a consigned memory, uh, which I did. Uh, which would be very important here should my opponent try to kill me this turn with Veil of Summer Protection. Which it looks like might be happening. <laughs> I suppose we'll find out. They only have five cards left. What could be so big a deal here? Galvanic Relay. I am definitely going to stifle the Storm Trigger. Uh, I do not like the idea of them... <laughs> Getting, uh, getting to look at seven more cards. And I'm fetching the Valk here because I'm probably cantripping next turn, and so I'd like to cantrip a Valk and then fetch for a Trop should I find something like a Veil of Summer. All right. Top one card. Better be good. It was good. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> All right, but now I have Forest Will Protection, which is certainly helpful. Uh, so yeah, my hand is numerous bad cards in it, so I'm going to Brainstorm, hoping to potentially uh, change that up a bit. Um, hmm. Do I want to just keep a ton of cantrips, or do I want to keep the amulet as like a potential part of my combo piece? And I think the answer is um, I just want to keep as many blue cards in my hand as possible. I'm going to get a Trop and Ponder here. Uh, these aren't interactions, so I will shuffle. That also isn't an interaction. So right now, this one Force of Will is going to have to uh, get the job done. When it brainstorms, I'm obviously not countering that. They could also have a Veil of Summer here, so it's like... I want to play around Veil of Summer as much as I can, <laughs> which isn't that much, but... You know, certainly uh, spewing a forcible on a brainstorm is not what I want to be doing here. My right, Dark Ritual. They have to cast the Burning Wish this turn if they want it. Like if they want to use it for something. But I kind of have a feeling I'm just getting killed through Veil of Summer. Um, I mean, I'll force this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can just have six now. Do they have enough? Let's see. One. Four. All right. Yeah, all right. Rough stuff here. Definitely getting high rolled a bit, for sure. Just like turn three win through force, turn two win through stifle plus force. Um, but yeah, we'll try to rally back for the next round. All right, here for round three, let's see if we can Make something happen. Um, this hand seems fine. 
Land count's a little bit high, but we only play 19 lands, so I think it's fine. Um, this all seems reasonable. I think I'm going to draw the Amphraptor. And, uh, keep the Manipulate Fate in hand. I definitely don't mind Ram Raptor hitting the Ice Fang. Um, especially if this is Eldrazi. Is the main Once Upon a Dime deck at this point in time. And then next turn, the turn, I should say the turn after I can cast Manipulate Fate. Or Amulet, depending on what I feel like doing. Interesting. So this is probably something like Red Green Initiative. Just goblins. General goblins. I'm definitely casting the Raptor now. It is nice that I know what I'm going to do. Put value. For two mana, I got a 1-1, one, one, a 2-1, and a card draw. I'll take it. <laughs> My opponent plays another cavern. Feels like not what they want. This feels like an ancient tomb deck. Okay, goblins and humans. I'm thoroughly confused, but that's okay. Uh, I think I'm gonna just do this to start, just because I want to get these cards out of my deck before anything else. I drew an Amped Raptor, which is pretty solid. All right, I will. I'll just fetch another island for now. Uh, Death Touch is online. Then I will ponder. Um, well, there's Food Chain. And, of course, the Amulet is not in play yet. Which means I cannot win um, next turn, but I can still play out the board. Play these out to the board. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything I have to be worried about here. In terms of hand disruption, but still going to protect <laughs> protect it. One thing that's funny, we do have this Amp Raptor where we could potentially draw into um Oh no! Oh no, my whole plan is ruined. <laughs> what do they pitch to this? Oh, they pitched the broadside. Okay. Still not terrible. Um, let's see how we recoup, though. Here's a Chaos Adventurer. Okay, so I think we have the win next turn. Because what we can do is... We know there's a land under this, so I'm just going to play out the amulet this turn. And then... Uh, play out the land. Then, I guess I can manipulate fate. Um, I don't know if it will matter. What do I want to exile? Probably just a couple lands, right? Just draw less of those. So, on Vista, I guess we'll take out the second Vista because um, we know we know we don't have basics left. All right. The next turn we get to play fetch land, raptor, food chain, and then use the food chain to combo with the scourge. Start winning the game. Suppose if they play chalice on two, we could actually. Uh, this is close to lethal, but not quite. We're going to live at one. That's pretty sick. We have to fetch, of course. Okay. Well, unless they have something else that I don't know about. I think we win. This is our first game win? Uh, no, actually an opponent conceded to Blood Moon. <laughs> Just don't tap your red, and then you're good. So food chain. Amp Raptor. Uh, Force of Will, we won't pass that. It's been a while since I've got an infinite combo on Magic Online. Plan slagging up. It feels like the opponent has conceded. All right, we got there. Holy moly. <laughs> kind of can't believe it. Uh, a little bit surprised. 
Um, Hydro Blast seems good. Um, they have things like Fable and Minskin Boo, so I think this is good. I'm gonna take the Dismember, and I will bring in like one Consign, just as a way to stop certain things from triggering. Again, I'll trim some cards for Chalice uh, sensibilities. I kind of like the Ice Fangs as a way to take the initiative. What else? Anything else? Here. And cutting cards with a combo deck is difficult, huh? Uh, okay. Let's see. I don't want to cut too much. Again, Raptor can fight for the initiative a little bit, at the very least. Um, like this is a way to kill Broadside and um, Chaos yes, Adventurer. Maybe Earl is like a little bit slow. I could see that. It's like kind of requires your opponent to not have Blood Moon. All right. This is uh this is what we're going to do. We have Dismember for Magus. Um, we're not in a good spot to cast Ice Fang, at least not yet. But um, between Draw Step and Brainstorm, maybe that changes. If we didn't have this Dismember, I think I would pretty easily pull again. Yep, Fable, unsurprising. Uh, I am going to kill the token so that uh, if they want to cast a four mana spell. They have to work for it, <laughs> and by that I mean potentially lose the city of traders. So I'll get the island here, and then um, and we'll fetch the forest with this, assuming that we don't get blood wound. May or may not happen. Okay, I just got an Elva spirit guide. I don't know if that's good or bad for me. I don't really need to get the initiative right now. What I do need is to find a way to kill her stuff. I'm at thirteen. Uh, and this is kind of the problem with decks like this, huh? You're just a little bit slow with everything. Um, I think three lands is enough lands, and we will put back the rest. So let's see. We could tune the narrative here, and then next turn, brainstorm hope to find something. Yeah, we're just super dead. I will soon try to find, like, a force of will. We did not hit it. Yeah, we're at one right now. Uh, effectively, opponent can fling his two things. Oh wait, no, we're dead. Um, yeah, we are dead. There's one can fling the other, and this can fling. Okay. Dead, dead, dead. Okay. I don't really know what else to bring in. I think this is kind of just fine. You could say like bring in Meltdown for like the. Maybe that's a little bit better on the play. Okay, I actually don't. Hate that. I will cut. Amulet for that. Okay. Do this. Maybe we can hit there. Chrome Mox starts and. Or if they play Chalice, we have an answer to Chalice. Obviously, the deck's like this. Not bad. Okay. This is promising, actually. We have Discharge. We have, you know, some stuff. I think I'm going to hold up the forest first. Question mark, question mark. Just because, like, again, I have. I want to play around Blood Moon. I don't think Blood Moon's in the deck. They've only really seen basics from us so far, but these Prism players, you know, they love their Blood Moons. That's why they play the deck, so I would never put it past a Prism player to keep in a Blood Moon and kind of just hope that it cheeses the opponent. So here I'm just going to fetch Basic Forest. Next turn, play Ice Fang. I don't mind trying to use a Ponder to set up an Raptor or... Discharging a broadside and then uh, getting two energy out of the exchange. Hmm. So this plus pass. That's fine. Ooh, Hydroblast is very strong here. Love me a Hydroblast. I guess there was also an option to play around Minskin Boo by playing out the mountain. Um, that was a consideration, but I think with the Hydroblast is definitely not true. Not correct. Mountain, cavern, would love me a, um, yeah, this one here. That's just quite good for us because we can seal the initiative now. Now, be a nice prize to not draw our snow covered island in either of these two, but if we do, it's not that big a downside. We're just down a card. I'm going to do this. 
initiative is mine. I get the island out of my deck. And then I could dismember this. I have three ways to kill this. I think I want to save Hydroblast for a better card. Um, and I'm going to leave up Hydroblast and Discharge this turn. Next turn I can play the Raptor with potentially some backup. Uh, I would definitely Hydroblast a... Well, that. Um, I could also just Discharge this, though. But I think I'm just going to do this. Yeah. Because the 1-1 one, one Haste steals them back the initiative, which is obviously not something that I want. Um, yeah, Lost Will is kind of nice because the Scry works well with the Raptor. Um, yeah, drawing this extra land is not ideal, but I will. Pop. Pop. Maybe this is wrong. I've just <laughs> missed on so many goddamn Raptor triggers this game already, so I would like to avoid that. Alright, and then let's just do this right now. Actually, no, sorry. For the same reason as before, let's not do it right now. And then, I actually don't feel like attacking. It's just one damage, and by not attacking, I play around broadside pretty well. Uh, yeah, not much I can do about that. Though, for what it's worth, that is kept in check by the Raptor pretty reasonably. Um, yeah, I'll just stash. I think I will. Okay, so I will ponder here. Um, I definitely... Don't mind the arrow. And I didn't want either of the other cards, so I was kind of fine with just fetching them away. Uh, and like hitting a random card off the amulet. Hmm. What does that do for us? Nothing right now. Alright, I'm going to actually do this and see what I get. Obviously, just at this point, just need a Miss Holographin to win the game. Um, now I have to decide if I'm using the Discharge to kill the Shaman token. I think the answer is no. Just because it's like, it's just denying them a treasure, but they already have access to five mana. It doesn't. If killing the token stopped the loot <laughs> or the rummage, it would be much, much better. But it doesn't, so it's not that good. Um, but yeah. Fury would be annoying here for obvious reasons. There it is. Um, hmm. I think I need to discharge the Fury because it's like. They can start copying Fury with the Fable. That's quite bad for me. Oh, but then this gets back the initiative. Actually, I am going to... And then I still have a 4-4, four, four, or 4-1 four, coming next turn. I guess I don't want them taking the initiative. Get my spooky skeleton. Uh, discharge is solid. I'm going to... do this. Um... I guess I escape Uro first and then Brainstorm, it just gets me the deepest. Let's get some cards that we don't. I don't think we care about anything, we have no graveyard recursion, so. We can kind of just click buttons at random. There's no more land for this uh, Vista to get, just FYI. Yeah, I, I do think I just uh, Brainstorm here. Hmm. Now, I do have... So I could get a food chain off of the raptor here. Do I want to do that? Or do I just want to cast ponder? Yeah, I think I just put back ponder plus vista and raptor into the ponder. Clearing the vista off the top of my deck. And then, nope. Put that here. Now I have the option to discharge. If I don't need to do that, I can just draw the Raptor next turn. I do have food chain going. And my board is pretty set up. Opponent would need something like Fury plus Red Blast here. And they actually can't even do that um, because they don't have triple red right now. 
Also just like kind of close to dead, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, interesting that they played Tap to the Ancient Tomb. I don't know why they did that. That's why. Um, okay, so at the start of combat, I will just take that down. Obviously shuffling the Amphraptor stings a bit, but you know, I think we're just so likely to win um, next turn that it kind of doesn't matter. Like we have 10 looks at um, any of the creatures and then we can just play food chain and exile that creature and yada 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 do the combo. Uh, the amulet was very good this game. I don't know exactly how much how many cards it drew, but it definitely you know helped clear our library. Works well with cantrips, blah 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 blah. Alright. And they concede. Um, which is fair, I think, with ten looks. We're on the board, and I think that's a good place to call it. I will be right back for the end of set review. Alright, welcome back to the end of set review. So that was definitely a bit of a butt kicking. Um we lost very handily to Storm, and we lost to Eldrazi. We did beat Prison at the end, and um, I did actually finish out the League 3-2. Um, my next two matches were against Oops All Spells and Red White Initiative, and I was able to take those games. Uh, so uh, a little bit of a salvage, but definitely felt like, um, certainly against Eldrazi, that was tough. I do think that's not too surprising. Um, Food Chain is... A very classic archetype but you know as legacy moves on as it speeds up it's potentially a little bit slow uh still i did enjoy what we were doing here i did think that the energy package played well into the deck um and very fun but definitely just a little bit too slow um for legacy in terms of like getting everything together um which is fine it's uh as a fun anecdote the first game i played competitively was pokemon and not actually the card game but the um the video game and what they do in the video game is that they have different tiers uh when a game comes out and it's based on usage so it's like if a if a pokemon doesn't see a lot of play in the top tier it'll drop down into a lower tier where you can play that and it's a way for you know, a game worth, this, you know, effectively like six or 700 different characters to make sure it's not just like the top 50 or top 100 that are always seeing play. There's bases for the other ones to grow. And I kind of feel like if you ported an idea like that to Legacy, you know, you had a, a tier two Legacy where like the top 10 creatures and like the top 10 spells didn't see play, then maybe Food Chain would be like, you know, that's where Food Chain belongs. Um, and... You know, our community is already very small. We don't need, necessarily need to, need to splinter it more. But um, I guess what I'm trying to say is this was fun. And I think that in a slightly lower powered environment, it could do quite well. But, um, you know, things have changed. Modern Horizons brought a lot of power, um, certainly made things faster. And while we are utilizing some of the Modern Horizons 3 cards, this is more of just like a, you know, miniature card advantage package, not necessarily just like a high power level package um and so uh we definitely felt like against the top decks of the format we were a bit on the back foot but again that's okay um magic means many things to many people and you can get a lot of enjoyment out of it in different ways and even though our record was not too good i actually did have fun playing this and i hope you all had fun watching as well and with that i will sign off and see you all again soon bye guys